Hey, Kompisa. And welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I want to talk about C, and from a different perspective than usual, and definitely different than what I did in my resource cleaning video. I want to talk about how before C Sharp and even Java came along, C already had features like object-oriented programming, subclassing, garbage collection, exception throwing and handling, and finally style resource cleanup. And when I say that it had these features, I mean not by trying to emulate these features, but just inherently that's the way the language worked. If you look at it from a short-lived, focused application perspective, or in other words, the way Unix utilities used to be written, and the way many of our popular utilities still work today, such as ls, grep, word count, sort, or others. And for my demo, I built a user interface library with a superclass and subclass and a demo application to do a simplified census in memory of what's now passed. And we'll show the demo first so we get our context. And I'm going to start in C sharp before I move to C. So it first asks the name of somebody. And this is a controlled input environment. So for example, if the name is Alexandra, uh-oh, it doesn't go past five characters because I put a max of five in. So I guess we'll go with Alexa. Hit enter here and type it up to three numbers. And it can't go past that either. Furthermore, with screencast mode turned on in VS Code here, I can show that whatever letters I type don't get taken. For the age field, only numbers work. So the next person on the list is Bob, who's 12 years old. Next person is Carl, who's 23. Oh, actually, I heard wrong, it's Carly. So I can press escape and it cancels out with a little dash there and it goes back to the beginning of my entry. So I can type in Carly, who's 23 instead and it won't accept enter until I have values in, and I can do control C at any time, which exits the program. So that's the demo. So we see that each field has a label and a max number of characters. Here's name and here's age. Age is also a constrained field that has an approved list of characters. I could have used regular expressions, but the list was easier to implement in C when we get to that. We have our main control loop here for entering each person. We can already see in advance this cancel exception idea here, which is what happens when we hit the escape key. Here's our subclass constrained field, which extends field. It has the approved list and it overrides a keep care method to see if the character is contained in the list. And for either class, prompt looks like this. This is an inner loop that handles input. We draw, then we handle a character of input. And while we keep handling input, we keep drawing. When we finally entered a value, we put in the new line and return the string value or whatever the user typed in. We want custom handling of control C, so we have a cancel key press event, but because the console outlives our field, we make sure to remove that handler when we're done. So for draw, we empty the line, then write the label and the value in our chosen colors. For handle care, we read a key. If it's backspace and we have any content, then we remove the end. If it's enter, we return false for done, only if we have content. Escape cancels, and any other key, we try to add on to the value if we're not to the max, and if we want to keep the character, where our default implementation for keep care is just return true. If we typed escape, we clear out our value, put in our dashed red, then throw that cancel exception we talked about, which continues our loop to the next person. And in the case of control C, we put in our dash again, but we don't tell it to cancel the control C handling, so it exits the program by default. So that's the quick view of how things work in C sharp. Let's move on to C. Or actually, we'll start with bash. This is the main control loop of entering people, which is equivalent to our main control loop from down here in C Sharp. Before we get to that loop, I've hacked in here the compiling of our C programs, which I'll explain in a second. We also ignore the control C because we want to do custom handling of it. We read our name and age. If someone canceled, we continue the loop back at the top again. Otherwise, we report the person. Now the fun part is our C programs. We have two programs, one called field and one called constrained field. Each of these programs does the job of getting input from the user and returning a value, as well as an exit code. And again, these are short-lived processes with very focused tasks, just like a lot of our standard Unix utilities. And my conjecture here is that it makes sense to treat a binary executable as a class and a running process instance as an instantiated object of that class. Let's look closer at this. So our first program is just field, where we give it a label and a max length. And for each of these programs, I compile from a main.c. Field main.c is where we'll start. I've abusively just included .c files, call it header only if you want to. I did this for convenience, 
most of the rest of the code we're looking at is approximately idiomatic. What goes in the main.c files is what's not inherited from the superclass. So here's our keep care virtual method, so to speak, and our main as well. Just like for C-sharp, where our superclass keep care always returned true, our superclass here also always returns true. And our main, and it's our object, aka the process that's running, then runs prompt. Let's look at init. First, read the command line arguments to initialize our instance variables, which are globals. And from this perspective, a global is OK in the sense that it's our object instance state. We're not going functional here today. So after we've read the command line arguments, we allocate a buffer to receive our input, and we clear it out. Call it for safety, though I somewhat did this also just to make sure the memory gets allocated for later on in the demo. Then we prepare our terminal to receive immediate input and not to echo the characters immediately either. And we also need to have catch blocks for catching our exceptions, aka signals, in this case sig int, which is for control C. And we also use at exit to call a function I've named finally, which restores our terminal state, puts in that final new line, and prints out the value for consumption in the bash script. This final value is the only thing that goes out on standard out. All the user interaction is on standard air. So once we've initialized things, we can do our prompt, where we have while true, draw our state, then handle new input. If you notice, this is not quite the same as in C sharp, where we had a condition on our loop. And there's a reason why we don't have a condition in C. And it's because of some of the semantic meaning that comes out of handling processes in this fashion. It gives us an advantage. Let's look at the draw, where we again erase our line, then draw our label and value in the chosen colors. Then we handle care in a way that looks a lot like in C-sharp also. We get our character. If it's backspace, enter, or escape, we handle those special conditions. Otherwise, we append the value, again, if we're within the max, and we choose to keep the character. Now in C-sharp, for enter, we check the condition of whether we had input, but we return a value. For here, if we have a value, we exit our process. Throwing an exception in this for C-sharp felt abusive. But in C, our object exists not just for maintaining whatever state, but also for expressing the current local control loop. And when we're done with it, it makes sense to exit that and return to our higher level control loop. So there's a different level of semantics here at this coarse-grained process level that we can take advantage of to express our meaning. We also can throw an exception, aka exit, if we have escape, or for our various asserts in case we have failure setting up. In the cases of these exceptions, we still need to make sure to call exit, and ending a process by signal normally won't call your add exit functions, which is a big part of why we have this catch abort here for our assert statements. And in the case of asserts, we manually call finally because we still want to exit on that abort. And down here in init, we only set up our abort handler after we've prepared our terminal, so that we know there's a reason to clean up from it. Let's quickly look at our subclass, and then come back to trying out some of these error cases. Our subclass is constrained field, and in our main, we include our subclass code, which includes our superclass code, but not the main from the superclass. And just like in our field main, we had our main function and our keep care. Constraint field also has main function and keep care, but this time checking to see if the character is in the approved list. And we explicitly call our subclass constructor, which simply calls our superclass constructor and grabs our final command line argument to store in our global, aka our instance variable. Let's try this all out to prove that it works. You can type in Alexandra again. Nope, just five characters. Age 45, enter. We'll believe the rest of it works as expected. Bob, control C, yep, clears it out, moves on. So let's go look at our bash script and change something. Instead of a five character limit, let's give it a 50 billion character limit, which means we're going to try to allocate a 50 billion character buffer. And I don't have that much RAM. So let's see what happens. Ooh, assertion failed. In my current environment, it even tells me what line number it happened on and the expression that it failed on. That's very convenient. And we could also test other error cases. Let's go have fun with something else instead, because I did say we were going to have garbage collection today, and I meant it. So instead of allocating 50 billion characters, let's just allocate 5 billion, a bit short of 5 gigabytes. And let's see first where our RAM is at. I'm using maybe about 3.5 gigabytes right now. Let's run this. Pause for a moment while it's clearing out that buffer. Now we're about 8 gigabytes in use, as expected. Now I had no free in my program at all. 
Let's find it. Free. Nope, no free. Just a malloc right here. Let's hit Control C and see what happens to our RAM. Control C. Wait a second. There we are, back down to our three and something. Because just about every operating system you'll run across, including DOS, will clean up a process's memory when it exits. Whether this is okay or not depends on your usage situation. And for the sake of this program today, where I said a process is what matters, and the process ends quick, and I know there's no allocation happening inside of my loops, one possible decision is to just ignore the freeing of memory. I can't ignore everything, because I have to restore this terminal state if I want my echo back, but free isn't technically required. Now what does this all mean? A lot of our modern software isn't really written this way anymore. And by modern, I mean decades worth at this point. More commonly, we have multiple control loops inside of the same process. Some outer control loop, some inner one, and the idea of a control loop is sort of ad hoc. I made a loop, I chose to put finalies and or catches in certain places as I saw fit as opposed to having explicit process boundaries for defining our control loops. And there's reasons why we write the software today the way we tend to do it. But I still think looking a little bit into the past and considering the stitching together of processes that have focused tasks is valuable. We also see a bit of this attitude in things like Erlang. And the idea of control loops and where exception handling should occur is also very valuable in my opinion. So I hope this has been an interesting perspective to consider and I hope it's been fun. Maybe we can readdress some of these topics again in the future. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe. Hey, though.